What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. Make sure you subscribe, thumbs up the video, leave a comment and check out some of my other videos. Okay, so it has been officially confirmed that HBO is indeed working on a reboot of the Harry Potter franchise in TV series mode. A decade long production each season of the show will feature one of the book's storylines. I did a whole video on why I actually thought this was a bad idea, but now that it's happening, I mean, I can't help but speculate and be excited about it, this new era of the Harry Potter franchise. We're going to get the entire story remade, which is really exciting. So in today's video, I wanted to talk a little bit about my thoughts on what this series could include that wasn't present in the original film series. Obviously, for time and production purposes, so much of the amazing content from the books was sort of left on the cutting room floor for the movies. There are so many key plot points that don't actually make it in into the film adaptations. And I understand why a lot of those things made, but growing up watching the movies, it was always interesting to see them for the first time and be like, oh, they didn't include this or this wasn't in it and this wasn't in it. And I think one of the biggest complaints about the movies over the years is how much of the books they actually leave out. Having a series and each season of this TV show featuring on an entire book means that, you know, if each episode is an hour long and there's 10 episodes in a season, that's 10 hours of content from these books rather than just the movie length, maybe two and a half hours max. It means we could get a lot more of the Harry Potter lore explained to us through this show, have a lot more of the flashback stuff. And in this video, I wanted to talk about the three main storylines that weren't included in the movie that I think desperately need to be included in the TV series in some form. The first and what I would consider one of the most glaring omissions in the movies is the entire backstory of the Marauders. Of course, in the Harry Potter books, we know of Mooney, Wormtail, Padfoot, and Prongs, who are in fact Remus Lupin, Peter Pettigrew, Sirius Black, and James Potter. We learn all about their history at Hogwarts, how they all became anime guy, how they all created these nicknames for themselves, and how they were an inseparable bunch that knew Severus Snape and picked on him a fair bit. There's an entire backstory there that is barely touched upon in the movies. And one of the most baffling omissions to me about the Prisoner of Azkaban film, as much as I think it's a fantastic movie, is the explanation of who Mooney, Wormtail, Padfoot and Prongs are. I genuinely don't think it is ever explicitly mentioned in the movies who their identities actually are. I guess it's somewhat implied, but it is not ever explicitly stated. There is so much lore there. We never even actually learn in the movies that Harry's dad was an Animagus who could turn into a stag, which is the reason why his Patronus is a stag. And we also in the movies don't learn anything about the Whomping Willow and it being planted specifically when Professor Lupin came to the school so that he could hide in the Shrieking Shack when he became a werewolf. All of that camaraderie between the Marauders and how they trained to become Animagi because they wanted to comfort Remus in the Shrieking Shack and the Shrieking Shack being the Shrieking Shack because they could hear the shrieking sounds of Remus as a werewolf. Plus the young Snape being saved by James Potter when approaching the Whomping Willow. All of that backstory is really important. It adds so much to the early understandings of the relationship between Harry's parents and Snape, Lupin and Snape, Sirius and Snape. It also really characterizes Peter Pettigrew a fair bit as the follower of the group, the one who was always tagging along. Of course, in the movies, we get glimpses of scenes like Snape's worst memory from Order of the Phoenix's book, and of course, the Prince's tale from the Deathly Hallows books, but we only get glimpses of what the entire chapters were. I would actually love to see a full episode of the Snape's worst memory chapter from Order of the Phoenix, and seeing the whole of that chapter, including Snape calling Lily a mudblood and etc. This is something I think the TV show should really flesh out because the movies just didn't give any context to it at all and I would love to see the Marauders explored more. One of the most popular kind of ideas for a Harry Potter spin-off series or movie is a Marauders prequel. And I think lots of people want to see that, and this might be the perfect opportunity to show those characters on screen doing what they did in the books. The second thing I want to see is the Voldemort backstory that is explored predominantly in Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince's books. We do get little glimpses of this in the movie, but we definitely don't get the full story that shows the scope of Voldemort's heritage and his extended family, the Gaunts, the Ring, all of these things. 
I think it gives a really good explanation as to who Voldemort was and where he came from and the nature of his descendants, what they were, what they did, the kind of pure blood purists that they were and the discrimination they had against certain people. The death of Tom Riddle Sr. and all of that is explored not at all in the movies and it's really disappointing. It is great seeing the young Voldemort in the orphanage for a split second but you don't really find out about all of the dark things he's doing even as a kid. That he's clearly this really traumatized child and I think exploring the young Voldemort maybe even alongside the young Harry in flashbacks would be really crucial and really fascinating. The third thing that I think I would love to see also spurs from the Half-Blood Prince and it is actually the explanation as to why Professor Snape is the Half-Blood Prince. This is one of the strangest reveals in the movie. It just happens at the end and Professor Snape just explains I'm the Half-Blood Prince without actually any of the backstory of that explaining it. I genuinely think if you hadn't read the books, you'd just be like, what? Why is he the Half-Blood Prince? What does that mean? Of course, we know in the books there is an entire backstory around why he is the Half-Blood Prince. His mother's maiden name was Prince. His father, Tobias Snape, was somewhat abusive. He had a very rocky childhood. It gives a lot of character to Snape. It also explains why when he met Lily for the first time as a child, he was so enamored by her, so attached by the comfort she brought her and ultimately fell in love with her. He was escaping this broken home and... I would love to see more of young Snape. We didn't really get it in the books, but actually having proper flashbacks to Snape as a child, like in The Prince's Tale, meeting Lily and Petunia, all the interactions he had with them. I think it would be fascinating to explore some of these characters in much more detail than the movies ever could, that the way the books brought them to life made them three-dimensional. And I'm not saying the movies did a bad job at this. I think Snape is one of the best characters in the movies, but... I do think that they could do so much more in a TV series format, and I think Snape is the perfect character to illustrate that with. It just makes the reveal of him being the Half-Blood Prince so much greater to Harry. Harry in the movies, I guess, has no understanding of why he is the Half-Blood Prince, but learning about that in the books, we understand it really well. Those are the three main plot points I want to see. Of course, there are so many other things that happen in the books that I would love to see, particularly Dudley's slight redemption in The Deathly Hallows. And they did film a scene of this in The Deathly Hallows movie, but it was cut eventually. You can still watch the scene on YouTube, like it exists, and I'm disappointed it got cut, but I understand why. I'd love to see that explored a little bit more. I think that was a really important part of the books is seeing Dudley finally see Harry as human, worry for him, fear for him. I found that really fascinating. I'd love to see that too. I might do a follow-up video of this with your suggestions. So comment in the comments below what plot lines were in the books that weren't in the movies that you would love to see in this story. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, like this video, comment, and check out some of my other videos. Thanks. I'll see you in the next one.